The Extraordinary Summit of the Southern African Development Community, SADC Heads of State and Government, is set to reconvene on November 4 in Luanda, Angola, having started on the 31st of October 2023 and failed to finish. Having first convened online on the 31st of October, the summit in Angola will be held in person and is set to finalize discussions on the consolidation of peace, security and governance in the SADC region. The SADC summit is responsible for the overall policy direction and control of function of the community. Although Zimbabwe has not been expressly written on the agenda, Many, especially those in the opposition, are still hoping that the country's elections, which were held on August 23 and 24, and from which President Emerson Nangakwa and his ruling ZANU-PF party came out tops, will still be up for discussion. AVG News spoke to a number of political party leaders and activists from Zimbabwe on what they wish and hope to see being discussed about their country at the summit. Here are a few of them. The extraordinary summit called by SADC on Zimbabwe is a, a much welcomed effort to try and bring about uh, the everlasting progress in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a country that has been polarized by a number of negative issues, human rights abuse, uh, state organs being politicized, uh, citizens losing trust on government, and so many things. Therefore, we expect SADC to push an agenda of creating an atmosphere that will create dialogue and engagement among the Zimbabweans. Uh, uh, an engagement or dialogue that will see Zimbabweans seeing themselves ushering the future of their country without any political uh, suppression. We expect SADAC to uh, create a, a, a political dialogue for all, I, I, including electoral reforms and the credible elections. We also expect a transitional authority to be in place that is going to see to it that uh, 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 changes or proposals that are made by SADC are implemented without fear or favor. Uh, reforms on all state institutions are really expected. Uh, those are non-negotiables, including the ending of a, a parallel constitution, the constitution of the country, as well as the constitution of the party running the country. We expect only the constitution of the country to, to, to run the affairs of the country. Therefore, a lot is expected from SADAC. And the SADAC must bear in mind that uh, the influx of Zimbabweans into the diaspora is having a negative impact on their uh, social and uh, political uh, uh, issues, whereby uh, they are parent uh, economically and socially by these Zimbabweans who are all over uh, 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 Southern Africa. Therefore, a, 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 a proper solution, a proper proposal on the way forward on Zimbabwe is something which is going to be much appreciated as it is going to help both Zimbabwe and certain countries e, 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 to usher into a new chapter, a new beginning that is going to see Southern Africa being counted within the column of uh, progress. I am fully aware that this weekend we are having a SADC meeting. The agenda is to deliberate on issues around the Zimbabwe the harmonized election that took place on the 23rd and 24th of August 2023. It is therefore my hope that uh, SADC deliberate on these issues uh, in view of their own elections governing protocols that they set as SADC. It would be very, very uh, improper for them to sit and deliberate on these 
past elections and forget that they have set rules and regulations governing the elections in their member states. I therefore implore them to make sure that as they engage and deliberate uh, parties in Zimbabwe, uh, parties that were involved in these uh, elections, may they engage with all the honest ascetic leaders, deliberate on the issues with a view of coming with lasting solutions. Zimbabwe needs uh, to have uh, solutions to this matter. We cannot have a scenario whereby each and every election in our country is disputed. While Satic is there observing each and every five years. I strongly believe that Satic need to gather their guts and make sure that they stand firm on their principles that they set for themselves as member states governing elections within Satic. I call upon each and every participant in this meeting to make sure that they deliberate, thinking in mind that there are people in Zimbabwe who are expecting a positive results out of this discussion, out of this meeting. I know that uh, in many cases, uh, Satik have failed its own people. In many, many cases. I strongly believe that this time around, they will try their level best to deliberate on these issues. Yes, I am a resident, I'm a citizen of Zimbabwe, resident in South Africa, very, very much concerned. We need a working Zimbabwe, we need a Zimbabwe with peace, we need a peaceful country, we need a, part, a, a country that will observe all democratic uh, uh, systems. Democracy is the way. You cannot go back to Stony Age politics whereby uh, we fail to observe our own set rules and regulations. I therefore uh, request Satchik to deliberate over, the, over, this, over this weekend, deliberate on this issue, and come up with a solution to these past elections. We are slowly approaching the next uh, elections in 2028. It will be the same story if Satic fails to observe their own set rules and regulations governing elections in the Satic region. We're looking forward to see uh, the Satic's uh, meeting taking place tomorrow in, in, in Luanda, Angola, and we expect the Satic member states to focus on issues of security, peace, and uh, governance uh, regarding the countries like uh, DRC and other parts of Saudi. But now, we also hope that uh, uh, the issue of Zimbabwe election, disputed elections, uh, as reported by Sadiq observers, will also feature in through the Sadiq Troika chairperson, uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Mr. Hakainde Ashilema, will table the report to the Sadiq member states and discuss. And we wish and think that they will find in their wisdom uh, it necessary to find a lasting solution in Zimbabwean crisis. We understand that uh, in Zimbabwe there is a crisis, a, a constitutional crisis, there's crisis in leadership, there's crisis in governance, uh, there is cri economic crisis, you name that. But uh, in the hope that uh, uh, they will discuss about this sad report, we pray and the wish uh, that uh, Sadiq member states will pronounce a lasting resolution to the Zimbabwean uh, crisis. You know, you can tell that uh, in Zimbabwe right now, we're witnessing people, uh, both ordinary people and uh, members of government in the opposition, like the MPs, uh, being abducted, beaten, you know, injected with unknown substances. In addition, our demands are very clear, uh, is that we need new and fresh elections under a new environment. We need the elections to be conducted by an independent pro pro presider. And uh, we also need uh, uh, a, a dialogue. People should uh, start talking to each other. Leaders in Zimbabwe should start talking to each other and find the lasting solution as well. But now 
we know that we are dealing with a, a heartless, a brutal regime, a leaders who don't care, uh, nothing uh, except power retention. So we would love to see the dialogue, talking, uh, leaders talking, finding out how best they can take the country forward. Without this thing that is happening in the country, that you find uh, leadership of the opposition uh, being arrested, being harassed, you know, they are treated as if they are not the citizens of the country. So, yes, uh, I, I want to believe that uh, uh, Sadiq will find it, uh, it, it, it necessary uh, to make pronouncement regarding Zimbabwe and that we can find ourselves uh, engaging each other as Zimbabweans and uh, of course uh, uh, any possibility which we cannot prescribe at the moment for example there can be an arrangement of uh, a transitional authority there can be an arrangement uh, which will reforms uh, will bring about reforms in the country so yes uh, it is all about uh, uh, change that we seek it is all about the uh, patriotism of zimbabweans and but we need an, an environment that I would like to recommend to the Sadiq leaders that they should revisit the Sadiq guidelines and principles on uh, democratic elections. Uh, I would like to also recommend that Sadiq leaders make it a point that their organization is not seen to be contrary to itself. They should implement action on the report that was produced by the CEOM which observed elections in Zimbabwe on the 23rd and 24th of August 2023. I would like them also to allow an extension to the period given to the opposition parties to take their complaints to to the electoral court in Zimbabwe. However, on top of that, whatever the outcome from court uh, will be, I would like the SADC leaders to recommend that the resolutions or the verdict of the court be implemented soonest we would like we don't want a repeat of what happened in namibia where the court gave a, a verdict and then the, the the implementation of the their verdict was done two years after while it is unfortunate that the the Sadiq leadership is seen to be commending and actually congratulating the leader of Zimbabwe, Emerson Nangagwa, who is believed to have rigged the elections. It is also up to the leadership of Sadiq to ensure that they do not set the wrong precedent where a body that is commended by them gives commendations, recommendations and they speak contrary to them. We would like to see SADC being respected like all other international bodies like the EU, ECOWAS and ETC. It is with deep regret that uh, rigging is a process that starts before the elections start. So we would like to recommend that the the SADC guidelines and principles actually come up with a curriculum of voter registration that will obviously be aligned to the constitution of a certain country, but there should be a generality to what is supposed to be actually told to the voters before the elections, because rigging starts before elections and it is where most of the rigging is done where the voters role is compromised and media relations are biased it is that which is important
and thank you very much thank you to the leaders of sadiq in advance we we know that uh, sata held a virtual uh, summit uh, and we saw the president of angola uh, congratulating Zimbabwe and Eswatini for holding what they call a peaceful election. So we do not expect that this weekend something dramatic is going to happen. There is nothing like Zimbabwe being asked to have a rerun of the elections because SATAC has already taken a position that notwithstanding what the observer mission team said, but they think that Zimbabwe did hold peaceful elections and uh, the next elections in Zimbabwe are going to be in 2028 uh, but in the meantime uh, those that uh, want to get to an election they should prepare for the by elections for the 9th of December uh, but of course the high court uh, uh, had a case was in session yesterday when they were deliberating on the recalls by uh, the interim secretary general of Triple C uh, if the court rules in favor of China so people should prepare for those by elections uh, uh, and then uh, of course the next election is going to be in 2028 there's nothing dramatic that is going to come from that we've also seen what professor mandaza is saying that uh, there, there's going to be a transitional authority in zimbabwe there's not going to be a transitional authority in zimbabwe because you are transiting from uh, what to what uh, so if Sadak says there were elections were free and a fair or yes as president ramaphosa said in the united nation nations that uh, mistakes were there and these mistakes should be corrected that does not call for a transitional authority and uh, this is not going to happen